untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a giant stompy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the full playset of Halana and Alina partners. The 4 mana 2 3 legendary human ranger from Crimson Vow has first strike and reach, and says at the beginning of combat on your turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature you control, where X is their power, and that creature gains haste until end of turn. So an incredibly powerful card that plays especially nicely with creatures that want to gain haste and attack right away. Cards like Westgate Regent, the 5 mana 4-4 four four vampire with flying, has ward, forcing the opponent to discard a card if they want to target it. And when the Regent deals combat damage to a player, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. So if we can curve our partners into Westgate Regent, we can potentially attack for 6, deal 6 damage, and then have a 12-12 Westgate Regent left over. So that's the dream curve. Then another new addition from Crimson Vow is a Blood Vial Purveyor, a 4 mana 5 6 vampire with flying and trample, so another great target to give haste to with our partners. And whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player creates a blood token, and whenever the purveyor attacks, it also gets plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn for each blood token defending player controls. So unless they can remove the purveyor, it's actually an upside. Then we also have the full playset of a Reckless Stormseeker to give us more redundancy in the haste department, a 2-3 human werewolf starting the day and night cycle, and on the day bound side, at the beginning of combat on our turn, a target creature we control gets plus 1 plus 0 and gains haste until end of turn, and then on the night bound side we get a 3-4 werewolf giving a creature plus 2 plus 0, trample and haste until end of turn instead. And then uh, taking a look at the rest of our deck, we also have the full playset of Asika's Chariot, another great card to be able to give haste to right away, as we can crew the chariot attack and copy one of our cat tokens. And then at one mana we've got the full playset of Sentinel to combo with our turn 2 Magda, which also plays well with our Asika's Chariot, can crew chariots with Magda, leaving behind a treasure token, and those treasures will help us ramp into our bigger creatures. And they also play well with Kalein Reclusive Painter, the 1-2 legendary human elf bard that when it enters the battlefield creates a treasure token, and other creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each mana from a treasures spent to cast them. So if we go turn 2 Kalein, we could maybe play turn 3 partners with an extra plus one plus one counter thanks to the Reclusive Painter, and then the partner's ability also gets much better if it has more power, because then we get to put three plus one plus one counters on another creature instead, so it also synergizes with the Stormseeker, giving it one additional power. And then we also have two copies of Valky, God of Lies, the 2-1 creature when it enters the battlefield. Let's us take a look at the opponent's hand, and then we can exile a creature card from their hand, and Valky can potentially turn into that creature, so shines against creature-heavy decks like Mono White and Mono Green that might not have a ton of removal to get rid of Valky early on. And then later in the game we can maybe play Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter, as a powerful 7-mana Planeswalker that provides a lot of card advantage by letting us play cards we exiled with Tybalt, the plus 2 exiles the top card of each player's library, the minus 3 exiles target artifact or creature, and then the minus 8 exiles all graveyards, giving us triple red to boot. And then we also have the full playset of the Caryatid. Now this card is only legal in best of one, as it's present in one of the starter decks. If you're playing best of three, you'll have to replace this with any other two mana ramp creature, and there's plenty of uh, decent options available. But I'm going with the Caryatid here, because it adds two mana of any one color if we control a creature with power four or greater, which our deck is pretty good at providing. And then it can maybe help us play like a Tybalt later by providing that one extra mana. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much our entire deck. The mana base also has two copies of Hive of the Eye Tyrant as an extra creature land, giving us an evasive creature that can also help us exile cards from the opponent's graveyard. And then the mana base has all 12 pathways in the Junt colors, as well as a few of the new dual lands with Death Camp Glade times two, two copies of Haunted Ridge, and then three basic forests and three basic mountains. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn two, Kalein can maybe set up turn three partners with an extra plus one plus one counter. Up against a green deck. Looks like also a Junt deck with turn two Rangers class. All right, let's uh, play Kalein. 
And then, yeah, I'm liking partners, turn three, which can maybe set up a turn four hasty chariot. Alright, thirst kills our reclusive painter, but the treasure remains, so miss out on a plus one plus one counter. Could also play Stormseeker instead, hang on to our treasure. Is that worth it? Could be somewhat reasonable. Could also go Stormseeker plus Sentinel. Um, or I could just play Chariot. Kind of like playing the partners here though, even though we don't get any haste damage in. And then if they kill it next turn, I get to play Chariot. Yeah, let's try it. Ideally, they don't have removal, and then next turn I get to attack with a hasty chariot with a few extra counters on it. Alright, opponent's just leveling up Ranger class, so happy to see that. And then I want to make sure I have double black for future double black cards. Play chariots. And attack for eight. Alright, so that was a good turn. Gold span dragon, quite powerful too. Gets in for five, makes a treasure. Now we do have a sentinel that has reach, as our opponent plays their own sentinel. Alright, so what's the move here? I could play Stormseeker. Could also potentially play like an, a Karyatid and give that a few plus one counters. So we can tap it right away, making two mana. And then I would four mana left. So I could play a Stormseeker and a Sentinel, but it would be second main. Now our partners also have Reach, so that can also potentially trump if needed. So I think for now playing Stormseeker probably makes the most sense. And then I can still play a Sentinel. So we'll crew the Chariots. Probably using Stormseeker and a cat token. Move to combats. And then I can target a cat token. And then if I target partners, I can give the cat token one extra power as well. So it's a 5-5. Five five. These can attack. Opponent chumps, takes five. And we'll play a second reach creature. And hopefully that's enough to survive. Oh, the caretaker, pretty large. Two counters on Goldspan, maybe? Nope, on the Wolf. Thanks with both. So we can chump the Dragon, chump the Wolf, probably. Opponent has one blocker, and then next turn we should easily be able to kill them. Alright, GG's. Untap, and I uh, guess I can play a Karyatid. And then I want to crew the Chariots, probably with a Cat token. Oh, 
move to combat. And smash with the team. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and yeah, this hand actually has a lot of power between Sentinel, Magda and Chariot. We've got a lot of ways to make treasure. Now I will need that treasure to eventually cast Westgate Regent as we're missing black mana. So, we'll pass. And then we'll have a turn 3 chariot. Could also go for something else. Like maybe even a turn 3 Westgate Regent. Opponent does have a pack leader, so if they have a Blizzard Brawl next turn, they could technically kill my Westgate Regent. So... I might want to go with something else. Now Chariot does potentially get blocked by a turn 3 troll from our opponent. So there's definitely an argument for playing one of the flyers out. And then... Regent is the most mana efficient, even though Purveyor survives a Blizzard Brawl next turn. I think I go for Regent and hope for the best. They have the third snow land, so Blizzard Brawl is a real possibility. If they don't have it, then Regents can turn into an 8-8, and that's incredibly difficult for Mono Green to deal with. So, this could represent Snakeskin Veil, vale, not worth blocking. Alright, looks like they actually have the Blizzard Brawl. Third point will have to discard. That's unfortunate. But at least we still have our Magda. Kalei in the draw. So now I could play an incredibly large Blood Vile Purveyor. Kind of like that idea. And I think I'll use all my treasure, make this an 8-9, and good luck for Monogreen to get past it. Would have been even better on the Westgate Regent, of course, which could have snowballed. But at least Purveyor can trample over Reach creatures like Sentinel. And then Chariot will help us gum up the ground while Purveyor attacks in the air. Opponent levels up Ranger class, but no attacks. And the Westgate reach into the draw. Alright, we get to have our cake and eat it too. So for now, Purveyor can attack. And then make some more black mana and play 5-5 five, five Westgate Regent. Now I could wait, I guess, and go for Chariot and then next turn have two treasure tokens to make this a 6-6. Six, six, so a plus one counter and a Blizzard Brawl is not enough to take it out. But at that point they're also going to be dead to the Purveyor anyway, so 
Might as well present lethal for next turn instead. Alright, and our opponent scoops it up. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a promising hand if we find red mana, which is definitely no guarantee, and I only have one draw step for Kalein to find the red mana. So, yeah, it's probably not going to be a turn to Kalein. Do still have a Chariot, which I can expect to play turn 4 into Westgate Regent. But the lack of red mana is definitely worrying. So, yeah, I'm afraid this is a mulligan. On the draw, I might have kept, because we're more likely to find red mana. And this hand is quite good. I've got Sentinel Magda Chariot again. And then... Do I go for Purveyor, or do I dream big with Westgate Regents? Well, I guess we'll dream big here. And then I need green. Turn 1, red, turn 2. So... That answers that question. Up against Mono White. And we'll pass it back. Thalia going to make our chariot more expensive, but we can still cast it. Although I'm liking the Westgate Regent quite a bit more. And then next turn, we can potentially increase its power with Stormseeker. And our opponent explodes. Turn 3, Westgate Regent. The only answer in Mono White early is like a Brutal Cathar. And our opponent doesn't have it and concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand, sadly, a little bit too slow. This one we can try. And then we'll bottom one Magda, even though there's an argument for keeping a backup in case the first one inevitably gets removed. Facing a snow control deck most likely, which is not our favorite matchup. Lots of removal that can ignore how large our creatures are. And then the combination of sweepers and planeswalkers, especially Spider Queen making reach creatures, means they can shun block or Westgate Regent all day long. So we'll need a little bit of luck to win this one. Alright, Sentinel can combo with Magda. Although if I want to guarantee Chariot next turn, I would play Kalein. Which is probably what I'm gonna do. Could also play Sentinel afterwards, but then if they kill Sentinel, it's a little awkward. Shambling Ghast, so plenty of chum blockers early. Might be a game where we cast Tybalt. What if I go Sentinel plus Magda? I don't think it's as good as having Chariots make a treasure with Magda right away. And then uh, Kalein with the treasures from Magda is also a bit of a combo. Skullport Merchant shows up. So they have enough power to potentially take out a Chariot. Which is a pretty good tool to have when playing against Sweepers, having a threat that can keep attacking. Luckily the rest is gonna miss. 
despite Valky having Tybalt on the back. Bonus got one card left. If that one card is a Planeswalker or a Blood on the Snow, we could be in trouble. And then I guess Merchant also just threatens to draw a lot of cards. So if we trade Chariot for a bunch of creatures from the opponent, it's not the end of the world. So Magda can help crew the Chariots. And then I want to hang on to Tybalt. And then we could also send in a cat token, I suppose, if we play Sentinel. If they blood on the snow me, then I might regret this. I might actually copy the treasure token here as opposed to a cat token. To ram towards Tybalt. Our opponent will try and take out Chariot, which does get rid of all their sacrifice fodder at least. And then I could decide to not kill Shambling Ghasts, and then they wouldn't get the trigger from Shambling Ghast, which they could use to finish off Chariot. But of course, if we keep their Shambling Ghast alive, they could sacrifice it to Skullport Merchant to draw. But if I wanted to, I could just assign two damage here, two damage there, and not kill Shambling Ghast. So, might still be okay to make this trade, but just wanted to point out this interaction. But, uh, it's a close call. Opponent fetching Introduction to Annihilation, preparing for Tybalt next turn. Merchants sacks Treasure to draw. Interesting that they didn't have Confronta Past to search up instead. I guess this is a little bit more flexible. Opponent looking at Field of Ruin. We'll get a forest. Possible we should have one basic swamp in here, just for Field of Ruin. Alright, so would I rather Exile Skullport Merchant or plus Tybalt here, assuming next turn they're gonna Introduction? I kind of like minusing on Merchant, so they also cannot get it back if they eventually Blood on the Snow, and that allows me to attack. So let's go for it. And then probably tap Sentinel. And then Magda can just attack. And then if they have to spend their turn exiling Tybalt with Annihilation, we're pretty happy, since we have another one. Yeah, Tybalt's definitely one of our better cards in this type of matchup. Opponent's very good at dealing with creatures, but not so much Planeswalkers. Another Chariot. So now we can attack. And let's see, can I Chariot plus Tybalt? Two, three, four, five, six. I think we're one off. I guess I could go Merchant into Tybalt, although kind of nice to keep Merchant as a draw engine post sweeper, maybe. So I'm going to try and conserve as many treasures as possible. So let's Tybalt. Plus. Spider Queen's nice. So our opponent's facing a lot of damage on the ground. Do I want to play a Sentinel or do we expect a Sweeper here? If they just activate Hive to attack Tybalt, that's not gonna win them the game. So I think I pass, since they probably already need to wipe the board. So we got pretty lucky this game, I think. Our opponent not 
having any planeswalkers and kind of missing on an early blood on the snow to wipe the board. Uh, Meat Hook Massacre for two. That works. Better opponent still very far behind. I'll keep plussing. Find the land. And then... Got quite a bit of mana to work with. Chariot is probably a play we want to make. And then uh, Stormseeker seems fine as well. So we can give it haste. And keep the Stormseeker in exile, since the one in hand can more easily be discarded. And then no need to play any additional creatures. Also reasonable to copy the treasure there. But I think they've got a few too many threats they need to answer now. Planeswalker, that could ultimate. A chariot, haste creatures, more planeswalkers. That's a lot to ask. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing black mana, so can keep. This is better. And then we've got Stormseeker into a 4-drop, hopefully. I think I still bought my lands to have a redundant 4-drop. Up against Mono White. Turn Code Spell, kind of an awkward play. But followed by Aspirants, which makes that a little bit better. So I think I'm okay trading Stormseeker for their two creatures. I doubt our opponent takes the trade. And then next turn I can maybe attack with a hasty chariot. Assuming Stormseeker doesn't get exiled. Oh, a lot of Luminarchs. So they will eventually make some very large creatures of their own. But for now I'm still liking chariots to give me a bigger board presence than purveyor. Then probably leave cat token back as opposed to stormseeker. Although I guess stormseeker might block a 2-2 a little bit better. Upside of leaving two cats back is I could maybe trade for a 4-4 code spell, whereas I don't really want to trade Stormseeker. Spellbinder is going to be a bit of a party pooper here, exiling the Purveyor. So now they can potentially beat me with their flyer before I can cast mine. We'll see. Code Spell with Vigilance, I guess, also plays well. But uh, I can pump Chariot twice to still attack past it. So do I take 6 or do I jump? Problem is Spellbinder is going to finish me off pretty quick if I take 6 here. So I think we're jumping. And then they're probably going to take the Chariot hits. Can't carry it at plus storm seeker and still attack with a six power chariot. Could give it a carry it at haste so it can tap right away, but then. Hmm. I mean, I guess there would be a way to get to my purveyor sooner. But then I can't attack with a chariot this turn, and it's the last chance I have to attack past Goat Spell Cleric. So, I kind of still like Storm Seeker here. And then 
probably tap like so. Their opponent is at six themselves. Ooh, I'm all of the Skyclaves is probably just gonna kill me here. Yep. I'm all on Code Spell. And then uh, two counters from Aspirant is just enough. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a uh, dream of Sentinel into Magda, so gonna keep, and then hopefully we can keep that combo going for a while. Alrighty, let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Swamp into Eye Twitch, so another more controlling deck. Now I could play Carrioted here if I wanted to. I guess that's reasonable. And then next turn, I've got quite a few options. Put on Black Green. So it would be nice to have a hasty Stormseeker in play before playing Westgate Regent, and our opponents might jump with the Eye Twitch already. As opposed to playing Regent and then our opponent knows to keep Eye Twitch to jump Regent. And then I could also play Valky, although I'm kind of tempted to wait until we can play a Tybalt instead, if our opponent's a more controlling deck. Advantage of playing Regent is that Carrioted makes two mana, so it becomes much easier to play a Tybalt next turn. So there is still an argument for just playing a Regent here. Alright, fine. Get to hang on to our treasure. And next turn I could play a turn four Tybalt's. Opponent could play a Meat Hook Massacre for two now, which would at least leave my Regent in play as our opponent fetches Introduction to Prophecy. So if that's their play this turn, I'm pretty happy. Alright, it's going to be a Binding instead. At least they had to use their Treasure, and they still need to discard a card here. Stormseeker is a draw, so let's see if I tap Magda, make a treasure, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah we can play a Tybalt, seems worth it. Another opponent has shown Binding the Old Gods, so they do have answers to Planeswalkers available. Was also hoping to just hit a land drop with Tybalt's plus ability. It's gonna be a chariot instead. Which we can also exile with Tybalt's minus. I drew a chariot. So many options. So let's say I minus on their chariots, play their chariot using Sentinel. Then Carrioted taps for two, plus we have a treasure. I can play Stormseeker and attack with a Hasty Chariot. That seems decent. And away you go. So, play Chariots. Crew the Chariots. 
now we control a four powered creature. And now Stormseeker can do its thing as well. Would have been nice to also copy a treasure token instead of a creature in case of a sweeper here. Since we're overextending a little bit. But we'll still have a Tibalt at least. Opponent not playing Snowlands, so I'm not expecting Blood on the Snow, but Meat Hook Massacre for 3 still does a great job. Ah, it's too bad. Soul Plus. And then play another Chariot, I guess. And next turn the Partners can pump it up. So yeah, trading the chariot last turn I found okay since we had a backup in hand, otherwise I probably wanted to hang on to the chariot so we didn't fall too far behind in case of a sweeper. Spider Queen's not bad. This does not deal with planeswalkers. But a Westgate Regent could be nice. So what are we thinking here? Probably start by plussing still? Or I could minus on the spider to make sure we can kill Spider Queen. Which is also reasonable, although I think a hasty creature will still get it done here. So I can plus with Tibalts. And then... Yeah, I guess I could play a Westgate Regent to crew chariots. Although then they could again trade for Chariot and cast a Sweeper. Am I okay with that? Or I could go for a different approach. I guess I could play Stormseeker, carry it to Crew Chariot. After I get a trigger. Uh, let's try that. So beginning of combats, Stormseeker targets Chariot, sure. That resolves, and then we can still crew Chariots before attacking. Opponent lets Spider Queen go. So we're gonna try and pressure Tybalt here. Or maybe find another binding. That's fine. Magda's interesting. So what do we want to do? Can play a land, have six, seven, eight mana available. Not enough for partners plus Westgate Regent. Could play a Magda to start making treasure. And I could minus on the Skullport Merchants. So that uh, they can start drawing with it. And then the treasures from Merchants also synergize well with Magda. And vice versa. We're gonna sacrifice Shambling Ghasts. If they try and kill Karyated, I guess I'll have to make the mana response. So, crew. And this can now make double reds. And then I think I hang on to Westgate Regent. Just go Partners plus... Could play Magda, give her haste to make a treasure. 
and then uh, Stormseeker will target the partner, so the partner puts three counters on Magda. Question is whether we want to keep anything back to protect Tybalt from the spiders, but I think Tybalt's already done enough. And her opponent agrees and scoops it up. Sweet, so turn for Tybalt steals the show. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We're missing a big payoff to give haste to, but for now, early Sentinel and Karyotid should be fine. Would also take a Magda off the top, but otherwise looking for some of our 4 and 5 drops. Well, let's see what he points up to. Turn 1 forests. And a Sculpture of Winter. Get in for three. And then hopefully our top decks are kind to us. Could see them blizzard brawl our partners as well here. Not much we can do about it. That looks like maybe a chariot. Land the draw. We'll grow the Sentinel, but sadly don't have anything else going on. So we'll just have to pass it back. Backup partners not really doing much. But at least we're making a huge Sentinel, which is going to be tough for Mono Green to get past. And then eventually we'll draw a flyer. Or a chariot. So I could make a hasty chariot. Which is probably okay here. Could also top deck Tybalt and cast it. I think I still put Chariot first, even though they could have a backup. And then they could also have a pump spell here, but I'm okay with that. So, opponent sends in the pack leader. And, uh... Don't really want to put Sentinel in danger just yet, because their opponent could finish it off with a fight spell second main. Or have, like, a kicked Inscription of Abundance. I do have another partner, so we could block with that if needed. Hmm, let's see. What happens if I block with Sentinel and trade partners... Then we could play around a snakeskin veil. An inscription of abundance would still potentially be bad. And then I guess Faceless Haven plus Blizzard Brawl could still finish off Sentinel. But that would be their entire turn gone. I guess I also block with Karyotid in case of an inscription of abundance putting two counters on the pack leader. Otherwise the double block would be bad. Yeah, I think we make that block. So I'm expecting some trades and then a second main Blizzard Brawl. The 
They could also make a troll and fight with it. Very nice Sculpture of Winter making four mana here. Right, and it's going to be a run and seven plus a Blizzard Brawl on Sentinel. Oh, no Blizzard Brawl. Well, that's awesome. So, Partners plus Purveyor, thanks to the Karyatids. And that can finish off Ren and Seven. While the Sentinel stays back, I think. Could also get more aggressive, but they could double block it. This seems good enough. Alright. So don't hate my spots, but can be too confident against Mono Green. We're still hoping to top deck more big flyers. Tibalts would be great. And gotta watch out for Chariot copying the Tree Folk token. So despite having kind of an uneventful start. We managed to make a big sentinel to protect our life total and then draw into some stuff. Opponent passes. Alright, let's keep growing purveyor. And smash. Next turn we could see something like make a Seekers Chariot indestructible with a Blizzard Brawl so they can attack, copy the Tree Folk and do the second time. So that's probably the best chance they have here. Their opponent goes digging. They got a little bit unlucky not to find a Blizzard Brawl yet. So they control a 7 7 Tree Folk. Chariots going to crew. And no Blizzard Brawl, so they're just gonna suicide attack with the Chariot to make an extra Tree Folk. And. Let's see here. They could still grow the pack leader. So I'm probably better off blocking like so. And this plays around a pump spell as well. So now our plan is to keep growing Purveyor until it can attack past both Tree Folks, or hopefully draw something useful. Yeah, I don't think we can attack. But our opponent does have an active ranger class, which is going to find them more action, and the tree folk tokens will eventually get bigger too, so this is not a comfortable situation. Our opponent is just being much more mana efficient, being able to spend their mana every turn, whereas we've kind of stagnated a little bit. 
And we have drawn a fair share of lands. So now if Purveyor attacks, our opponent could still sacrifice the two blood tokens to make that a bad attack. But we're getting close. Opponent wants to draw with a pack leader. I think we block like so, because if I block pack leader with Purveyor, they could pump it and then have a Blizzard Brawl with Tree Folk to finish off Purveyor. Whereas now, that's not necessarily the case. Ooh, there we go, Tybalt's. Alright, so now we can exile a tree folk and attack with Purveyor, forcing them to chump. Even though we don't get any value from Tybalt's, I think that seems good. Alright, opponent does have the snakeskin veil, unfortunately. So we'll have to wait. Do I keep growing Purveyor? Do I diversify and grow the Sentinel? Because their opponent's probably going to make a big attack to pressure Tybalt now. Could grow Sentinel a little bit more so it can block a Tree Folk profitably. Alright, so Tybalt will have to wait. Backup Ranger class. And we'll see how aggressive they get. No attacks. Right, let's see what Tybalt finds. An Inscription of Abundance. Okay, that should be quite powerful indeed. So I could put counters on the partners, so the ability will be more powerful every turn. Alright, two counters on the partners. We gain life, and this can fight the biggest tree folk. Our opponent did not leave any cards in hand, which they could have maybe combined with the blood tokens to get rid of a good card on the top of their deck, so we can draw into it with uh, Tybalt. I guess alternatively, what might have been even better is fight Sentinel with a smaller Tree Folk, and then Purveyor could have just attacked, forcing them to chump with the other Tree Folk instead. So that was maybe a little bit better here, but yeah, opponent's gonna pack it in. Sweet, so it took a long time, but we eventually found Tybalt to carry us to victory here. Sweet, so yeah, overall this Jun's aggro deck needs to have a smooth opening for it to be successful if we have to stumble out of the gates or if we face a deck with a lot of removal that can ignore toughness, so mostly black control decks. Those are going to be pretty tough matchups, but against other creature decks we can usually go over the top fast enough thanks to all our haste threats that we can uh, close out the game in time. So, yeah, pretty happy with where the deck ended up. Could maybe see making a few tweaks to the mana base. Possible that three of each forest and mountain is a bit excessive and we could play a few more dual lands and maybe put in one swamp as well just for those Field of Ruin moments where you still need access to double or triple black. But otherwise, pretty happy with where we ended up. And I'll make sure to update the mana base in the deck list linked below the video. So that's going to be it for me today. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.